Hi, my name is Vicki, and I am reading to you today a story that I wrote for my creative writing class. Professor Ann Olson is the teacher. Um, this story is based on a picture that um, we saw and we were just supposed to write about how it made us feel. And so I hope you like it. We sit in the car and just stare at it, neither one of us able to speak. The ruins of this prison where he was held as a boy sit there powerless now. It was never called a prison, but a workhouse. Local residents knew of its existence, but they ignored the atrocities that were taking place in fear of retribution. His chin juts out in defiance of the memories that fled through him. I put my hand on his shoulder and he turns to look at me with tears in his eyes. I'm sorry, Pop. I say, but I'm not sure why I'm sorry. I guess because I thought this would be a good trip for him, a way for Pop to face the demons from his past. The pain he endured as a child in this hellhole. He told me his stories years ago and then repeated them over and over until they became almost my own memories. He says his stories are a way for the healing to begin and also a way for him to honor the memory of those that never made it out. I'm sorry I brought him here. There is pain that is too great for a person to bear and I think this is it. Pop slumps down and he closes his eyes. For a moment, I think that he may have left me, but then he sighs. Pop, we can go. We don't have to stay here any longer. My eyes are brimming with tears about to spill the pain I can only imagine that he's feeling. No, he says, his Russian accent breaking through in full force. His voice sounds heavier than before. Tired. I'm worried about how much of this walk remains. Piles of crumbled rock and steel rods sticking out from between the stones. I look at the road. It's broken into pieces like a child's Legoland. My eyes drift across the road. At one time there was probably a large field, but now only a large drop-off into a chasm of rubble and earth. If someone had been standing there when the earthquake hit, I imagine they were swallowed whole. The glorious saving earthquake that brought down those monsters within the wall. An act of God? Sometimes I wonder. But then I think, how could God have allowed my pop to be taken and held prisoner for much of his childhood? When my pop was a child, there was a great unrest in Russia. The world was a different place. Children were commodities and labor, and he and many other children were kidnapped and held prisoner in his terrible place by their own countrymen. They were forced to work as slaves and treated worse than dogs. When he wasn't working, he was locked in a tiny stone room with a wooden slab in a thin, bug-ridden mattress and a tattered, scratchy woolen blanket. Pop told me how he'd wake up with rats huddled under his blanket for warmth. He shuddered, remembering how many times he'd been bitten by them. As he grew, they became his prey and meals for him when his captors forgot to feed him. He was just a little boy when they came into his home and they took him. They were so brazen they came in in the middle of the day with no fear of authority. He was sitting at the small metal kitchen table looking up at his mother, his legs swinging happily as she seemed to dance from one side of the kitchen to the other. Her voice was musical and he longed to hear it again. That was the last time he saw his mother. He said he'll never forget his eyes. The burst in and they drag him down the hallway. Pop was screaming, his arms and legs were flailing, trying to grab something to anchor himself and keep them from taking him. He could see his mother. She was pinned down on the kitchen floor, reaching for him, stretching. Her eyes never left his. Then he heard a bang. She dropped her head in final submission. She stopped moving and screaming. As he looked at her lifeless body on the crimson floor, he stopped fighting too. He stopped screaming. He just let them take him. Papa says he's always before they when he and his laughing and talking. They would talk about the small events of the day. She would always tell, make a, had a way of making sad events funny. He could almost hear her laugh. She would talk about the grouchy neighbor getting upset about something silly. That's the mother that he tried to remember. Well, the one that came back into his mind is the one that gave up on him. Now he realized she had no choice. He always ends his story by shaking his head and furrowing his brows. He whispers to himself, searching his mind, what were we talking about?
Somehow the memories escape him. Exhausted from the past, he usually drifts off into his thoughts. The peace that finally touches his face somehow comforts me. Although it never lasts as long as the nightmares break in, and then the screams, it pains me to hear. The car door slams back into reality and see Pop walking across the broken stones in the road. Jumping out of the car, I yell, Pop, wait! But he just keeps walking, stepping over rocks, walking closer to the broken down prison. As he gets nearer, he seems to stand up straighter and gain more strength. His face is determined. I grab his arm as he stumbles over the rubble and starts to fall. Pop, we gotta go back. His head droops and he nods. We turn and start walking back towards the car. Pop, I'm sorry. We never should have come. I don't know what I was thinking. He stops and he grabs my arms and I feel the strength of his youth. His eyes pierce my, smoke, my soul and he smiles. It unnerves me. Then he turns me loose and he walks back to the car. I stand there stunned. How could he smile at me? As I walk back to the car, that's all I can think. How could he smile? I get into the car engine. I look at him and he smiles again, but this time it's a smile of relief. Let's go home, he says. Then as I look into his eyes, I smile back.